For centuries now, Mount Athos has stood as a cradle of orthodoxy on the easternmost promontory of the Chalkidiki Peninsula. Its inestimable natural and cultural heritage safeguarded by the monks who inhabit it. The lushness of its vegetation, enhanced by the sanctity of the site, gladdens the heart of the visitor. In the early part of the 19th century, phytogeographer Griesbach noted that nowhere else in Europe was the vegetation as dense and abundant as on Mount Athos. On the Athenite Peninsula, there are three major forest zones characterized by broadleaf evergreens, principally home oak, laurel, strawberry tree and Mediterranean conifers, primarily Aleppo pine. Broadleaf deciduous species, primarily chestnuts, but with important stands of oak. And montane Mediterranean conifers, including holy mountain fir and black pine. There are also valuable mixed forests, primarily in the southern part of the peninsula, for example around Crianera. Broad-leafed evergreens dominate the central and southern part of the peninsula in a band stretching from the coast to altitudes of 1100 meters. Much of this zone, some 5,621 hectares, is covered by home oak forests. These forests, which are found chiefly on the east side of the peninsula, with smaller tracks on the west side, and one even smaller in the south, are remarkable for their extraordinary biodiversity and unparalleled beauty. Over virtually the whole of the eastern side of the peninsula, we find mixed stands of home oak, ash, strawberry tree, buckthorn, myrtle and laurel. These are among the loveliest of all types of woods, because they contain such a variety of species, each one different in shape and colour of leaf, flower and bark. This beauty changes with the revolving seasons, but is perhaps most intense in autumn and spring, thanks to the new mosaic of shapes and colours that is created each year. The chief characteristic of the home oak forests, particularly on the eastern side of the peninsula, is the abundance of climbing plants, including smilax and old man's beard. On ridges, in shallow or poor soil, in local pockets with southern exposures, we find strawberry trees, heaths and filaria, with scattered individual home oak, ash, laurel and judas trees. On the south side of the peninsula, there are stands of home oak, with denser patches of Kermes oak and eastern strawberry. The most important woody plants are Kermes oak, downy and home oak, myrtle, hop hornbeam, judas tree, turpentine tree, ash, laurel and honeysuckle. The Hungarian oak forests on Mount Athos are limited in extent because of the nature of the rock and the competition from chestnut trees. They occur primarily on the western side of the peninsula and always as coppiced woods. The broadleaf oak often grows in mixed stands with Balkan, sessile oak, chestnut, fir and black pine. Hungarian oak forests cover a total of about 1,000 hectares on Mount Athos, at altitudes from 100 to 1,400 metres. Most of these woods are found in the southern part of the peninsula, the greatest concentration occurring in the upland areas around the monasteries of Megisti Lavra, Simonopetra and Osiu Gregorio. 
The southern part of the peninsula also has notable stands of oak, both unmixed and mixed with fir and beech. Today, although most of the Hungarian and home oak forests on Mount Athos are highly representative with regard to plant species composition, the fact that they have been coppiced has adversely affected their structure. Forest fires and clear cutting have reduced once majestic forests to a shadow of their former splendor, with only a few tracts, like the home oak wood of the Skiti of Ayana, standing as a reminder of how things used to be. The idea that one could restore the forests of Mount Athos to their primal state is, of course, a pipe dream. It would take centuries of work, and even then it is doubtful whether it could be achieved. On the other hand, however, to continue with the present system of forest management, which has resulted in such a deterioration of the soil and the woodland structure, would be simply catastrophic. Out of the need to conserve the particular ecological and aesthetic value of Mount Athos, while at the same time continuing to produce useful wood products, came the need to rehabilitate these forests, a need identified by the holy community of Mount Athos as of exceptional importance. It was this that led to the launch in 2003 of the Life Nature Rehabilitation of Copis Quercus Freneto Woods and Quercus Ilex Woods to High Forest Project, undertaken by the holy community in cooperation with the Greek Biotope Wetlands Center. Κύριος σκοπός του έργου είναι η ανόρθωση των δασών δρυός και αριάς σε The main scope of the project was to initiate the rehabilitation of Hungarian oak and home oak woods to high forest. Η μέθοδος που εφαρμόστηκε για να φτάσουμε σε αυτή την κατάσταση είναι η μέθοδος των επιλεκτικών αραιώσεων και which over the three-year life of the project would be implemented over an area of 500 hectares. A secondary aim was to promote the rehabilitation of such woodlands, and particularly of home oak woods, in other areas using this method. Before beginning the thinning operations that are the focal action of the project, the woodsmen who would be doing the actual work needed some training in the theory and practice of selective thinning applied to the oak woods. A seminar on how to select trees for cutting was organized for the monks who are responsible for forest management on the peninsula and the woodcutters and subcontractors who will be harvesting the wood. In this way, the cumulative pool of knowledge and special expertise was shared. Home oak forests require heavy thinning, removing 20 to 30% of the trees forming the canopy in one in every three or four trees. In particularly dense stands, growing in good quality sites, this yields excellent results in increased growth and vigor of the remaining individuals. How is selective thinning actually carried out? In home oak and broadleaf evergreen woods, we select suitable stands in which home oak and laurel constitute a minimum of 50% of the canopy. The trees must be at least 20 to 25 years old and at least 5 meters tall. The best season for cutting is August to October. The success or failure of the whole operation depends on the proper selection of which trees should be cut and which should be left. The basic principle is that a positive selection be made from the canopy trees. That is, we cut only tall trees and we start by choosing the ones we want to remain, the very best individuals, and eliminating their strongest competitors, which should be as or almost as tall and vigorous as those that are to be left. We do not select poor specimens for thinning. The thinning should be sufficient to help foster the growth of the selected trees and should be carried out in such a way that only the experienced eye of the expert can tell that the forest has been touched. 
Η αρρώστια επαναλαμβάνεται κάθε φορά. The operation is repeated when the effect of the previous thinning on the best individuals in the grove or the greater portion of the stand has been absorbed. Ήστο μεγαλύτερο μέρος της συστάδας. Πρακτικά. In practice, in the particular conditions of Mount Athos, thinning will have to be repeated every seven to ten years. In oak forests, thinning should be slightly less drastic, with no more than 15 to 20 percent of the timber being removed. Coppiced oak forests present a different case from that of the broadleaf evergreens, because the production of valuable timber of substantial dimensions is at least as important an objective as the rehabilitation of high forests. The actual procedure is the same as that described for the home oak forests, and the individuals selected for removal should be 20 to 40 years old. Although selective inversion thinning as a method of rehabilitating coppice oak woods to high forest is both familiar and successful, the only studies on its application to home oak woods in Greece date from within the last 10 years. The Mount Athos project will be the first time the method has been applied on such a scale to home oak woods anywhere in the Mediterranean. Given the research importance of this project, a program has been set up to monitor the results of the interventions with 45 permanent monitoring surfaces which are expected to be the first to reach maturity. Ύψος δέντρου 11, σημείο έναξης κόμης το 9. 11, ηλέξ διάμετρος 14 και 2. Καλώς! While the rehabilitation of Hungarian and home oak forests will certainly favour the conservation of their biodiversity, the most obvious result will be a reduction of the fire hazard and the gradual restoration of the primal landscape of Mount Athos. Reducing forest density helps slow the rate of spread of a conflagration. It also permits more sunlight to penetrate the canopy, hastening the decomposition of the organic matter littering the forest floor, which creates a highly inflammable layer when it accumulates. The increase in the amount of sunlight also fosters an increased diversity of plant life, which favours animals as well. Slowly, these woodlands, now impenetrable by man or beast, will become more accessible inviting the wayfarer into the shade of the matchless paths that run through them. The reduction of the fire hazard, the rehabilitation of the forests and the increase in the wealth of species inhabiting them will bring nearer the primeval peace of the natural habitat, which is an integral part of the millennial Athenite tradition. <laughs>